Okay, just want to have a look at this uh, circuit that I've assembled here to explain a little bit about neutrals on the secondary side of a transformer and what that neutral's function is and why we define it as a neutral connection and what it can do and, and not do in a circuit. So uh, first I want to look at the primary side of this transformer. I've got basically a representative of a residential transformer where there's a primary side. I've got two wires coming in here supplying this transformer at about 123 volts AC. I've got a switch here so I can turn the unit on and off supplying the primary and I've got a fuse on the other side of the primary and these two wires are just coming from the uh, wall socket. I didn't even pay attention to which one is the hot lead from the wall side. I just want to consider this uh, uh, single phase AC sine wave 60 Hertz 123 volts applied to the primary side of this transformer and then the transformers uh, turns ratio is going to dictate what the voltage is on the secondary winding and it's such that uh, I would measure approximately 15 volts between the uh, ends of the secondary winding uh, so you can do the math and figure out the turns ratio on that. But there's uh, secondary winding with about 15 volts AC. Uh, and then in the distance of copper wire that's on, that, that is, makes up the secondary winding, right in the middle of that length, they've connected a third wire here, you know, made a solder connection to the secondary winding and brought that out as a wire. And I've just connected it to the switch. I've got the switch open, so I've got a, uh, physical point where I could, if I want, connect to the center point of that transformer. So I could techni technically use half of the uh, length of winding here or the other half of the length of the winding here. And I've got two different voltages potentially here. I've got 15 volts from the outsides of the secondary winding. I should have approximately 7.5 volts between either end to that neutral. And if I bring in my voltmeter here, I can just verify that. So I've got my voltmeter on uh, AC volts, auto ranging, and uh, I've got uh, from the outside two legs, it's reading 14.99 uh, volts, 15 volts dead on. Uh, if I go to the neutral from this side, 7.99 for 7.46 volts, 7.45. If I go from this side to the neutral, 7.45 again. So those aren't adding up completely. I've obviously got a little bit of a voltage drop through the wires, but approximately half voltage on this side of the neutral tap, approximately half voltage on this neutral side of the neutral tap, and again back to full source voltage from the outside two legs. So that's how a neutral is created on the secondary side of a transformer. Now what I've got wired up here for loads, I've got two incandescent lamps and with this neutral switch open right now I've basically got those two lamps in series. They're actually six volt bulbs but if I uh, measure the voltage across either of them, uh, not not uh, related to the neutral point because the neutral point isn't electrically connected now with the switch open. But what I've basically got is two six volt lamps in series on the uh, secondary, on the outside of the secondary uh, connections of the transformer. And as Kirchhoff's law states, you know, the sum of the voltage uh, potential uh, should be reflected uh, in, the, in the sum of the voltage drops. So if I measure the voltage drop across this lamp, seven point. 6.9, measure the voltage drop across this lamp, 7.13. They're not exactly uh, equal because these two lamps, even though they're the same part number, obviously the filaments, filaments don't have identical resistance when they're up to temperature. But that's basically what I've got there. Without the neutral being attached, I've got a series connection uh, of two loads in series hooked up to a 15 volt supply. Of course, the issue with series circuits, if one of these loads becomes open or disconnected, the other load can't function because there's no way for the electrons to get through a complete circuit without this bulb. Both bulbs are part of the 
complete circuit. If I take this lamp out, I'm going to have the same problem. So I need both loads. That's not an ideal way to uh, to, to connect something. I mean, diagnostics very tricky. If I put the neutral switch and close it, uh, we're going to find that not much changes as far as the circuit. This light might have got a tiny bit brighter. This one may have gotten a tiny bit dimmer. But now I've got a much better circuit. If I can take one bulb out, the other lamp can still function. It's basically functioning on a half voltage supply from one side of the neutral to the end leg of the secondary. So we're basically using half of the secondary windings to power that lamp. Again, put this lamp back in. This lamp's unaffected by whether or not that other lamp is present. And of course, if I take the other lamp out, this lamp is fine with that as long as that neutral connection is present. Now, what I've also got running next to this one lamp is a resistor and another switch that gives me the ability to put that resistor into parallel with the lamp. And again, I've got the neutral path here. Um, it doesn't make a lot of difference if the two loads are balanced or basically equal resistance. It doesn't make a lot of difference whether that neutral is open or closed. But if I bring in this parallel load, which could be another lamp, in this case I just wanted to use a resistor to uh, give off some heat. If I bring that parallel load in with the lamp, of course nothing changes, although more current's now flowing on this side of the secondary, the transformer, than this side, the lamps are unaffected by that. If the neutral isn't there, well then the lamps are going to be affected by that as I disconnect or connect this load in parallel with this one lamp. It affects the voltage potential at that lamp. Now I've got a, a basically without this neutral in position, I've got a series parallel circuit. I've got one lamp in series with these two loads in parallel. So the voltage you went through and did all your Ohm's law ratio and proportion. You know you discover that the voltages are not the same on this side of the circuit with the neutral switch open. I've only got just shy of 4 volts on this side of the circuit. I've got almost 11 volts, 10.9 volts. Um, so I've got a voltage imbalance because I've got a current imbalance in this series circuit. I've got a series parallel circuit. If I put the neutral path back, of course the two voltages are going to be balanced again because basically this side of the circuit is running off of this half of the secondary winding this side of the circuit is running off of this side of the secondary winding and of course my voltages go back to being just about 7.45 on this side and 7.4 on this side again the voltage drops are reflecting some imbalance but basically uh, each side can run independently so I guess the question that needs to be answered is how much current is ever flowing across that neutral conductor. Obviously the current is going to be changing as I balance or unbalance the loads. So what I'm going to do is move my uh, multimeter over to the milliamp scale and we'll actually measure the current flowing across the neutral. I'm going to go into milliamps, I'm going to stay on auto ranging, AC. And what I'm going to do is just open the uh, the neutral switch, but then I'm going to use my multimeter to close it again. I'll let the current flow instead of through that switch blade. I'll uh, go through my multimeter to rebalance. And it's showing I've got about 140 milliamps flowing through the uh, neutral path where my uh, ammeter has been connected. So what that's representing is the un imbalance between the two sides of the circuit. I've got 140 milliamps more flowing on this side because I've got more load and I can see that on the neutral. So when the neutral carries current is when we've got an imbalance in loads. If I would take this resistor out of the picture and balance up the two lamps again, I've only got about 7 milliamps because the, the lamps are almost identical. There's a very small amount of current flowing on the neutral. And of course, if I take the neutral away, the circuit still functions. That's 7 milliamps is you know, not reflecting a, a, a enough of a problem that the lamps are affected in any way. But of course, if I've got an imbalance where I'm relying on the neutral path to carry that 140 milliamps, 
Uh, if I take it away and I take that path out of the circuit, of course, then I get my imbalance and voltage drops in. And this is what's meant by balance in a uh, three-wire secondary type system. So the neutral carries unbalanced current. It only carries the difference between the two loads. If the two loads are balanced, well, then we don't really need the neutral at all. There's, there's no imbalance. There's no need for current to flow in one side of the transformer secondary at any higher uh, rate than it's flowing on the other side. So again, that's what's meant by a neutral carrying balanced current. So I hope that clears up some of the uh, confusion that may be uh, present about the function of a neutral, why it's there, uh, what it does, and how we can have two different voltages in a center tapped uh, three wire secondary system, even though it's still single phase uh, AC, creating that middle point creates that neutral junction. And the neutral wire on this circuit has uh, got yellow stripe on it. Uh, in, according to the Canadian Electrical Code, neutral in a, a three wire single phase system should be gray or white as the identified wire is uh, defined in the code.